key season. Uh, what's the, the challenges you've had this week? Oh, I think just mainly the, the main challenges is that it's different. Um, so you actually change your program a little bit. Um, and the fact that it's so far away, I suppose. Uh, but uh, the travel's not too bad. Um, I, think, I think you only need maybe 24 hours to acclimatise. It's fine, it's a great city. It's good to be here. Anything different at Port Adelaide, No, not really. We've done the same things. I mean, obviously, as Rocket said, the travel's a bit further, but outside that, everything's pretty normal for us for the week. We'll train this afternoon, train again Saturday and play Sunday, so it's a pretty normal week. Rocket, Rocket. not ideal that uh, the flight was delayed and you sat on the tarmac for two hours. How did the players cope? Oh, I coped okay. I mean, uh, we'd spoken about that before we left, that uh, I think everybody's experienced some delays in international travel, um, so that was nothing out of the norm. The players coped really well. It's only two hours. It's no big drama. Now, on the weekend, you expressed a few concerns in that radio interview. Now that you're here, and, we, and you're, you're... I didn't actually express concerns. I was asked a question, and I answered uh, you... what the facts are, that the, yeah. that the travel time is, and uh, um, and I was asked a question about business class, and I said there's only a few in, so there's no complaints, um, there's no concerns. Like like Port, we've uh, had this on the radar for... Well, they've had it on the radar for three years, but we've had it on the radar for six months, um, and we've done our preparation accordingly for it. Coaches, when you're coming into an unknown ground that you've never played on, hardly seen. What's it doing for your thinking there? I mean, doesn't doesn't change too much for us, Rouge, because I mean, it's an opportunity. The, the footy ground will be, you know, as a club, we've actually been there and had a look at it. It'll be it'll be okay. It'll be fine. It'll be not that dissimilar once the boys get out there and play. And that's the thing we forget sometimes. Once the boys get out there, and, you know, the balls bounce. They're just playing footy, and they it doesn't matter where they play it. It's a great opportunity to be in Shanghai to play it this time. Though. Have you seen the ground? No, 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 I, no, no, I haven't. But I've seen the dimensions. It's not too different to probably the Adelaide Oval, really. Um, it's not too different to Geelong's ground. So, in fact, we've played there before. It's no drama, really. Rocket, we've talked all about the travel and the potential for injury, and yet you brought a bloke back in who's missed a month of footy for an away game half the half the way. Well, you know, the other side of the world. So, what, what does that say about his preparation? And is there a gamble there? Um, oh, I suppose there's a gamble bringing anyone back that's been out for three or four weeks. Uh, but, but we're certainly confident in the work that he's done, uh, that he plays a unique position where it's one end of the ground, um, so he doesn't have to run around like 15k. Um, so, so he's trained well, uh, he's quite key to our setup. so we're certainly more than pleased to have him back in. And the potential matchup with a former teammate of his, Charlie Dixon, I don't think Charlie's played against the Suns yet, so um, I guess that's the matchup. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, look, in fact, Jack Leslie's been playing well, Stephen May can play him as well, so we've got the three. Um, I mean, they normally play the two tools. Uh, Stephen can play below his height as well, can play on a smaller player, so we think that'll be okay for us. How is Charlie heading into the Charlie Dixon Cup, Ken? <laughs> yeah, no, he's pretty good. He's in great form, that's one good thing. And yeah. uh, for us, as Charlie's played the best football I've actually seen him play in his career in the last in the last couple of weeks particularly, but over the, the course of this year. So, look, he's, he's pretty confident. He's up and about about his game. And obviously, it's a you know, it's a first-time opportunity to play against his old club. He, he doesn't need to do anything extra. He just needs to be part of the Port Adelaide team. There will be no think? booing, can he? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have thought so. No, not over here. I think the, we'll have a, a, a good number of our people in the crowd, so he'll feel at home. You were part of the national growth of the game. How do you feel it now that's gone international? I think it's great. I think it's fantastic. I think... Uh, I think, I think it's twofold for us, and I imagine the same for Port Adelaide. I think it's one for the AFL itself, be able to, able to globalise the game and uh, expose more people to it. And I think from our point of view, as we've mentioned a lot about the tourism to the Gold Coast, so I, think, uh, I think the Chinese people will certainly, uh, certainly see that as a positive. Do you think it's something that you could do every year? Would the Gold Coast be happy to participate in it? Certainly from a football aspect, yes. I think, it's, uh, I think there'll be some positives out of it, but that's out of our control. That's going to be, that's going to be more the administration. Talk about that. Do you see it though as a sustainable thing that could happen for every year for you know, the next oh, five or ten years? I don't know. I don't know what 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 the variables are to make it sustainable. But uh, certainly, if it's a, you know, if it's a positive for the AFL and a positive for the Gold Coast Suns, yeah, for sure. Will the heat be a factor at all, guys, on on Sunday? Oh, I wouldn't have thought so. I wouldn't have thought so. That uh, certainly not for us because we're you know from the Gold Coast and I think Adelaide gets very hot in the summer as well. So, um, but it's supposed to be 27, 28, so it should be fine. What about the pollution? No, it's fine. Nothing here at all. Going good. Going good. It's all fine. Robert, yeah, I saw a couple of wives and I think Jared Harbury has got his little baby daughter here. Do, do you encourage the players to make a bit of an experience of this other than just a game of football? Uh, not personally, I haven't. Uh, but certainly uh, we spoke about it earlier that if uh, the players wanted to bring some family or bring their partners over, there's no drama with that at all. Um, so I think there's half a dozen of them staying on afterwards. Um, 
a few of them going to the Great Wall of China and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But the main focus here is obviously winning going to football. Kenneth Marks, Travis Bokes, one of the game as Port Adelaide captain. Can you tell us what he has been as a captain for Port Adelaide through what's been an interesting four years? Yeah, he's been a fantastic captain for us as a football club. I mean, um, when Trav took over the job, the, the club had uh, you know, come off some pretty dark times. And, uh, you know, from the time he's taken the driver's seat as captain, he's, uh, the club's grown. You know, we've got 60,000 plus members. We're playing a game in Shanghai. We're doing lots of good things as a football club. And we've been a you know, more than competitive football team. But our challenge is, is challenge to us is to make sure that we're uh, better than just challenging football team. We need to be one of the teams that are at the top of the ladder. And that's still one we haven't ticked. What about the partnership between you and him as Captain and coach, you both hit 100 at the same time. What sort yeah. of that been like? Oh, obviously, I've said plenty of times on record, he's more than more than your captain. They become your son and uh, an extra part of the family. And Travis, exactly that to me. He's, uh, you know, he's enormously proud of what he is as a person, not just the footballer. I say that over and over again, and I mean it. Have you seen McGarth Certainly been pretty positive for us the last couple of weeks. Now, there's, uh, you know, is it sustainable? And Chad needs to can do that over a long period of time. That's what the great midfielders are able to do. And you know, we took you know, Gary's and the other side. They do it over. A, 10 year period, not over a two week period for Chad. He's got the challenge of being able to do that for a longer period of time. Obviously it allows us some great flexibility, you know, with him and Robbie Gray to play in different roles. It certainly allows us to be a little bit more creative with what we can do. You're What's the bit? latest on Robbie Gray? <laughs> Fine, he's here, he's in Shanghai, he's ready to play. He'll train this afternoon and, uh, you know, we, we get the same question. Rob's, uh, Rob's no different to any other player. He has nickels that he deals with and uh, he'll be fine to play. Will there be any changes? The weekend, the, the or, or the groin, because there was so much confusion during the week as to how Robbie Gray is, which was it this week? Robbie got beat by, uh, by his opponent on the weekend. I think it's too much to, you know, not have that conversation with Robbie. He, he gets embarrassed by some of the hysteria that goes around about his groins or not his groins. That Rob's just a normal player and he can have bad games of football, hopefully not again on Sunday. Um, last couple. You mentioned, uh, you asked about Trav. You had Ollie step in as, as a caretaker a couple of weeks ago. Um, is it fair to say you've got your succession plan worked out there? That's certainly the perception from the outside. Yeah, well, I suppose it's a reasonable thing to, con to put on the agenda, but uh, you know, Ollie's a, as a young vice captain, he's got a captain that's leading the way at the moment, and from, from my point of view, I'd, I'd expect at some stage down the, f down the future track that Ollie will probably assume that role if he continues the way he has been so far. Okay. Rod, you were asked uh, in that radio interview about air quality, and you made the point that you wouldn't bring, you wouldn't pick anyone for the game who had asthma air yeah. issues. Can you, you, you can, uh, three changes because of injury, can you talk to that a little bit? Sort of Which one, the injuries or the...? Well, both. both. How sort of, has the air quality affected selection? No, not at all. Not yeah. at all. Um, that was more probably uh, a deep, because I was asked about the sandstorm and things like that, which was... Uh, which I didn't expect, and uh, so um, uh, we, you know, there's probably one of the players who were injured who's got really bad asthma that we wouldn't have brought. So I was in, that was in front of mine, mm -hmm. um, which he wasn't up for selection. So, uh, but the injured players are genuine injuries, injuries yep. obviously. Um, and we certainly love to have them here. So that was more on the injury front. Yep. Did you have to do with selection a lot earlier than you would have liked this week? Uh, no, not really, because we brought the 25. I suppose the people who are in, around the mark to be picked in this side uh, are here. So that doesn't hurt us too much and you know we'll finalise that after training though.